Hi everyone. Um, God has just been putting on my heart recently. Just with walking through all the breakthrough that I've been walking in with mental health. Um, I just wanted to speak to those that maybe are struggling with anxiety, maybe are struggling with depression, maybe are struggling with all these things where um, sometimes our minds can just envelop us and we can feel like we're going down this dark tunnel and the spiral and one one thought can bring us to the craziest end that we are worthless, we're helpless, we're unlovable, all these lies that can fill our hearts, can fill our minds, um, can start actually fueling the way that we're living our everyday life, which is taking away from the goodness that the Lord has for us in the way that He's designed us to live. And so I just want to share with you guys some of the things that God has been speaking to me in the past couple months. Um, and just really walking out in um, in the truth of, of what he's speaking. And so I just want to give you guys some tips of things that I've um, been working on and different things that the Holy Spirit's spoken to me about. Um, as, yeah, anxiety. For me. I personally have struggled with anxiety. Um, and that's something that was very difficult to explain to other people that have never experienced it. Um, because the things that can make you feel trapped... <laughs> um, if you say them out loud, other people are like, why are you believing that? That makes no sense. And it doesn't help you that no one understands why you feel so small um, in your emotions and your thoughts and everything. And so I just wanted to share with you guys a few things um, and tips that I um, kind of have worked on in the way that the Lord has spoken to me and I've kind of walked out with Him in. Um, and so one thing is the biggest thing when it comes to our mental health is that we have choices, um, that it's our choice, um, whether to choose the temptation of, of believing the lie, um, which will then bring us down to a spiral of, of so much darkness, or we can choose to lean on Christ. And obviously it's so much easier said than done. <laughs> like me saying this is because I've had to do it and I've done it and it's possible. And the reason I know it's possible is because it says it in Christ's word. It says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. And that's found in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. We have a choice. We... So many times we can feel so powerless when we're in this, this anxiety moment of, oh, like I'm so powerless. I, I don't see the hope in this. Um, but that's where it's so important to say, okay, the Lord has told us in his word and his word is truth. He's told us that we can endure this. We can endure the temptation, but not by ourselves. Like that's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. That's why he gave us Jesus. Jesus was an example to us of how he leans on the Father. There was temptation to Jesus, but what did Jesus do? He turned to the Father. He lifted up his face and said, I need time to be with the Father. I need to be fed and drink of the living water and, and drink or feed off of his food, God's food that he gives us that's everlasting. Um, and so from that, I started making the decision um, to throw the temptations away. And I know this sounds kind of funny, but what I'd actually do, and I just recently started doing it, is that when a temptation would come to my mind, I would like pretend I was doing it physically, but I'd like take it out of my head and throw it in the trash can. Like I would imagine a trash can and throwing it in the trash. And it actually helped. It helped taking the thoughts captive, like Paul tells us, um, to take our thoughts captive and all those things, um, which keeps us from tunneling down into despair and hopelessness. Um, because something that is so real when you're dealing with this, this issue is that there's, it's really hard to find hope. It's really hard to find the good in it. It's really hard to seek the good in it um, in your situation. Um, especially this quarantine, I know a lot of people are dealing with when does this end? When will this ever, where is the light at the end of this tunnel? And the biggest thing is just realizing that um, where is your hope found? Look back, have faith. Where is your hope rooted in? So often we use hope as an uncertain thing when the Lord is really calling us to use it as a certainty. That I hope in the Lord because I know and I have faith and I've seen him do it and he's going to do it again. 
to use our faith to bring us to hope so that we can look to the future and get excited and be ready for what God has for us. And I really had to go deep down and say, where's my hope? I have none. I literally got to a point where I said, I cannot see any hope. I don't know what's going on in my life. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know why I'm struggling so much. And you get so focused on me, 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 me. And then you go in, oh my word, I'm so selfish. I'm such a terrible person. I'm worthless. No one can love me. All these lies, right, that seem so, they seem dumb, but they're so real when you're in it. Um, And the enemy just wants that. He wants to suffocate you. But let me tell you something. If you feel suffocated by the lies, it's because the Lord wants to use you and the enemy knows it and he does not want you to win. Um, The biggest thing is our hope is built on Jesus Christ. Our hope, when we use our hope, our faith to look to Christ and have hope in him. We can look back and we can see that Christ already overcame. We can see that he's faithful, he's comforting, he's loving. Look at those times in your lives where God has come through. Look to his promises and see that he's faithful and then hold fast to that and find hope in that. And that's my encouragement for that. But with those moments when you feel those lies so real in your life, one of my biggest advice, like the biggest advice I have for you is stop fighting Satan. Stop fighting him. You are not supposed to fight him. It's prideful thinking that you can because you are not God. I am not God. We cannot fight him. Our job, as Christ says in 1 Timothy 6, 12, is to fight the good fight of faith. We just get to look and say, Jesus, I trust you. I trust that you are good and you are faithful and you are going to win. You put your hope in Christ because you see how faithful he is. You find the faith. Um, it is not your fight to face. Jesus Christ, let him fight for you. Ask Jesus to intercede for you. When you are tired and you are weary, let Jesus do it for you. Um, And then also this place of bringing yourself to a joyful surrender. Thank God. Find the things you're thankful for. Rejoice. Um, Where do you ask, ask God, where do I lack trust and where is that rooted in? In what areas am I not trusting? In what areas am I not hoping? Um, Because we are called to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him who makes our path straight. Path straight, and that's in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. When we lean on our own strength and understanding, we get tired. We are not meant to be our own strength. Christ says, come to me. For those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength and they will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. In Isaiah 40, 31. God is for you guys. God is for us. And this breakthrough is a moment of complete surrender, joyful surrender, thanking the Lord for what he's doing. And don't ever feel like anything you feel, anything you're thinking isn't good enough, isn't worthy enough for someone to hear. Um... Jesus wants to hear everything. His heart is literally to sit with you right next to you all day long. He wants to be in every area of your life. He wants you to invite him into every aspect, every second, because he loves you and he fought for you and he died for you. So guys, today I just want to encourage you, go to Christ, ask him who you are, ask him to fight for you because he will win, he will overcome. And so yeah, this is just kind of the encouragement that I have for you guys. Um, today, and I just want to kind of say a prayer over all of you. Um, Father, thank you so much for your will and your way and your hope and your truth. God, thank you because you are stronger than mental uh, mental um, health. God, that you are stronger than anxiety and stronger than stress, and you can overcome and you have overcome, Jesus. I pray for everyone listening to this today, God, that has dealt with, um, yeah, different things with mental health where they feel... Um, lost or confused or oh god it's like a cycle of confusion lord and i just pray your presence and your peace to flood them god that they will realize that they are not alone that people all around are struggling with similar things god and that i just rebuke the enemy in jesus name from any lie that is uh, coming over them and lord i just bless everyone that's listening amen bye guys